Hi everyone and welcome to my From Start to Stage video series and well girls we're down to the wire. I've got just over two weeks before I compete on stage in Brisbane um, for ICM which is I Compete Naturally competition. I think I'm in the bikini section and um, yeah it's all sort of gets interesting um, I would say as of next week so just to share with you my week that has been I wanted to start today with exercise you know I've been rattling on um, about what this has done for me mentally and emotionally um, for the last weeks and I've been so thankful for that this morning I took I took a moment to acknowledge the amount of work and exercise that goes into getting ready to be on stage in one of these competitions. In fact, I took a moment to acknowledge all those women that actually do it because I realise this is a lot of commitment, a lot of work and a lot of money. <laughs> so just to share with you where I'm at with my exercise now. So I've got just over two and a half weeks to go. And my coach, Sarah, um, sent me through my new training schedule to start on Monday, which was yesterday. And my workouts for the last, probably for the last eight weeks, six weeks, have all been around one and a half hours in weight training for six days a week. And I've been doing 15,000 steps a day, however I get to those steps. And I, I think I told you I've reduced my running. So now we're coming down to the wire. Um, so what happens now is we try to lose a little bit more body fat so it brings out the lean muscle mass when you're on stage. And the way that we do that is we up the cardio. So now I'm doing my one and a half hour weight training sessions, remembering girls that I'm lifting rather heavy for me. And I'm now adding, so we're doing 20,000 steps a day. And I will be upping my running now by Sarah to four times a week rather than three times a week. So I'll be doing four by five kilometer runs, which will be into the 20,000 steps, but to get through 20,000 steps a day. And I just took a moment to think about that this morning because when I looked at my program, which I um, am very progressive with, I realized, wait for it, um, I looked it up. I've done 20 new personal bests over the last 25 workouts. And that's like a pat on the back moment for me because I have been truly um, buckling down and being very mindful of not just getting in the gym and doing another workout. I've been very mindful of um monitoring all my weights all my repetitions and I've been pushing boundaries as often as I possibly can and I'm just so proud of myself because like I've got a lower back injury and um, I think I told you that I felt like once I'd got a diagnosis and I understood that it was you know, aging discs and there was a little bit of narrowing, um, but there was no bulging as such or anything like that, that I gave myself permission to push the boundaries, to really challenge myself. And I realized with my leg press that I used to push 80 um, kilos and yesterday I was pushing 120 kilos. So I've actually improved by 40 kilos which is a lot of weight that's a lot of weight that I'm extra pushing and I realized with my lunges I was doing um, 10 each end which was 20 and the bar and I'm now doing um, 18 each end so what's that that's 36 so I've gone from 20 
kilos to 36 kilos with my lunges. So that's a 16 kilo improvement. And the one that I really struggled with mentally was one um, called deadlifts. And it's where you sort of flex, you come forward and you pull the weight up and you squeeze into your bottom. And um, that one always worried me with my low back. And anyway, once again, I've gone from doing 10 kilos each end. My bodybuilding girls will probably laugh at that. I'll go, <laughs> that's a lot for me. And um, I've been able to get up to 20 kilos each end. So I'm doing 40 kilos. So I feel like that's impressive. I've doubled the weight. I've done all these personal bests. Um, my legs are really feeling stronger. My glutes are feeling stronger. What that's done for me is taken pressure off my lower back. My lower back now feels a lot better just by really managing that um, strength training in the bottom half. And I'm proud because, as you know, we're heading down the mountain. Like I'm 54, but what I've done is pushed boundaries. I've improved my strength. So I'm heading back up the mountain. My body is um, increasingly muscle mass. And the weigh-in this morning reflected that. So my weigh-in this morning, I've lost a whole percent of body fat, but I've gained a whole percent of um, lean muscle mass. So I was sort of excited because I looked at my journey since the beginning and I started this back in May. Can you believe it? Here we are heading into September. And, you know, it's just so fascinating, girls, because I have put on 300 grams of weight since May. <laughs> and it's just interesting knowing like all this change to diet and change to exercise and, you know, but that, as I say to my girls, the, the scale when you're weight training, it just doesn't mean much. Like, is that, am I weighing fat? Am I weighing muscle? Am I weighing fluid? But because I've been able to break this down, because the scales I've got, you can probably see them in the background there, they actually do a, um, they do like a body, a body breakdown. So they'll say, this is how much water you're holding, this is how much muscle, this is how much fat. And, you know, I looked at from the beginning, um, so I've put on 300 grams since the very beginning, but my body fat has gone from 14.5% down to 12.9%. So that is just a fantastic result because I've lost that in body fat, but my um, lean muscle mass, which has gone from 45.9, now as an aging woman, it should be getting less, I've been able to go up to 47% um, lean muscle mass. So 47% lean muscle mass from 45.9 and be able to reduce my fat. So what I've been able to do is get less fat, more muscle, and gain a little bit of weight on the scale. So they're all just massive ticks. If you think the big picture here of body composition, who cares what the scale says when if I opened up my body, I've got less of the fat and I've got more of the um, muscle. And looking at my visceral fat, that fat in and around my internal organs, which is that dangerous fat, I've gone from 3% down to 2%. So I've actually lost 1% of visceral fat, which is what we would call that dangerous fat. So very good. It's been a very good um, program and journey. And now, as I say, we get down to the um, scary end. <laughs> so this is where if you're listening to this journey, it will get interesting in the next couple of videos because we manipulate uh, my body through movement and through diet. And so um, just to cover diet, you know, what do I say? I'm just, I'm, I'm a bit of a boring person. I just, I tend to be very, I'm good at habits. I actually love habits. I love routine. I love um, getting my diet to a point that I enjoy and staying with it. So um, just to give you a bit of an outline, like for me for breakfast is like oatmeal. And some of my girls that work with me would go, but you know, that's a carbohydrate. But you got to remember girls, I'm doing a big output here. I'm doing an hour and a half of weight training at very heavy weights, heavy for me. And um, I'm also expending energy with my cardio and I'm expending energy in my work. So 
this is I have oatmeal so this is not for my weight loss girls maybe I'm sort of push more toward protein but I add protein in there and I add a massive amount of cauliflower because I love cauliflower in my breakfast and then I add all different um, powders like my maca powder for my hormones and my green powder for antioxidants and I also have my protein powder which is whey isolate powder which is the most beneficial of the whey proteins and um, assist me with maintaining my lean muscle mass and I also have blueberries on there and walnuts and I have my good fats and and then I eat again girls mid-morning lunch mid-afternoon and dinner and I also have a protein shake at three o'clock in the morning when I get up so I'm actually eating six times a day I'm um, really making sure that I'm getting a massive amount of fibrous vegetables I'm getting a massive amount of um, protein and good fats and I'm monitoring my carbohydrate intake. And um, yeah, it's fantastic. So I feel good. I feel strong. Um, my body's feeling well. And at this point of the game, I'm feeling quite happy. Okay, so in saying that, I will just say, I think I'd shared with you, I got my hormone testing back um recently and all was good which I was very happy about but I think I also told you that she mentioned that my b12 was quite high which normally you would say is a big tick but she as my famous naturopath um had an underlying feeling that because I wasn't supplementing in any way vitamin b why was it so high? So she had a inkling that maybe I wasn't a word they use methylating properly, which I think from what I'm reading, it's more like the absorption type thing. So anyway, she put me on this um, B methylating um, supplement and OMG, all I can say is for me personally, I felt it's really flattened my um, emotions and I want to say emotions because girls I can get sort of a little bit like this through my day um, which I know is normal for all of us but I can riot the highs and the lows like I can be super excited and then I can get super tired and I can get quiet and I can get a little bit victim mindset and all those good things <laughs> and I always say to my kids it's called colorful kids like <laughs> no boring here but I feel like it's made me less colorful in a good positive way I feel calm I feel relaxed I feel and I'm like could this possibly be from taking this one tablet so I feel like this naturopath has changed my life in a way because she changed my lunch around to being very protein um fibrous vegetable based and, and like a major main meal at lunch and that was a massive tick in the afternoon because I felt it stabilized my blood sugars well now that this B vitamins coming into the picture I just feel like next level again like it's just like wow I, I'm I'm feeling blessed and grateful and lucky because you know I'm just like my body feels well and um, I just feel so um, grateful for that and feel like the pieces of the puzzle can just take so long to click in, can't they? Because I was having um, night sweats terribly and it was, you know, I could not get hold of those. And it was frustrating because it was making me, you know, have all those mood swings and tired and lethargic and fatigued and brain drain and all the rest of it. But now I just feel like I've been, I'm rocking and rolling again. It's like I've got every, all the pieces starting to click again. So I'm just thankful for this journey. And so the next step, girls, is I, am, I wait for my what we call peak week eating plan. And um, that will come to me next week. And that will be what I'll be doing for the last week before the competition. I've also actually got to book into the competition, believe it or not, I actually haven't paid the money to book into it. But the reason I did that was with all the lockdowns, um, one of the big competitions up here has been cancelled. Um, but my competition hasn't. And I was a little bit like, 
maybe you should just hold off because it could potentially be cancelled. And I don't think it's going to be. I feel like Queensland seems to be going okay with all of this. So I could be wrong, but I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to pay for it because I feel like that's another commitment. It's another step in the direction to getting up on stage. And um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. Posing, you know, I'm practicing not as much as I should be. Haven't heard about my bikini. Um, I've decided to just travel up on the day. I've got my makeup and hair and all that organized um, rather than booking for accommodation. So I just thought I'd go up and back. But my coach has mentioned in the last training schedule that there's three other competitions this year that I could potentially enter into if I chose to. And, you know, at first I go, oh, why would I do that, all this work? But then I think, well, you've just done all this work. Like maybe you should push yourself for two or three shows and just see what comes from it like this is what I know is you know the behavioral changes that come from stepping into something that's out of your comfort zone is crazy and I love it like I'm really starting to embrace that idea of stepping into your fear what is it what do you fear and for me it was judgment i um, getting up on stage bikini 54 judgment People are going to judge me. People are going to tell me, you know, that they're not going to tell me. They're going to say it behind my back. And all this was like in my head. But I thought, you know what, who cares? Like, who cares when we get to that age? So um, I'm just happy that it um, is all working out the way it's working out. And, um, yeah, all good. So I'll let you know next week whether I decide to do that or not. So girls, I think that's all I wanted to share with you today. My weigh in and measurements, I've lost another centimeter off my waist, which is a good thing because that's sort of a body fat area. Um, everything's good. I've put on a centimeter in my legs, which suggests I've put on lean muscle mass from all those PBs I'm doing. And um, yeah, let's go from here and see where um, this all ends up. All right, guys, have a great day. Thanks for listening in. I do appreciate it. It keeps me on track, accountable and um I think, oh, I've got to count into those girls. I better do the right thing. <laughs> Have a good one. Take care. Bye for now.